I'm a projectionist by trade, um, having served something like 40 years in the business one way or another. And when the Curzon was being saved from being sold off, I volunteered to go along and do the, some projecting for them. I was taken on and that's how I got to be at the Curzon. And I renewed then my love of showing films. At the time, the cinema was, being a heritage cinema, um, was open to the public to view what remained of the original cinema, basically the balcony and the upper floors. But of course they were empty. I was fortunate enough to be able to receive a number of heritage projectors of all gauges and hence the Curzon Collection was started and it really opened in the year 2000 and took up most of the top floor of the cinema. The Curzon Collection is about preserving, looking after and telling the story of cinema projectors, 35 millimeter, but also because of its popularity in the mid 20th century, home cinema as well. So all gauges from 35 millimeter down to eight millimeter were featured in the collection. We had um, just about all types of visitors that come to the collection. The children can actually show their own films in what was the kiddie kinema. Uh, they could show Mickey Mouse or whatever on toy projectors. And not only them, of course, but the mums and dads wanted to have a go as well. Yeah, run on to that and then when that film's finished, you feed it back down again, start up the projector and it rewind it. In its history, it had two projection rooms. One was uh, up at the, behind the balcony and was disused. And it was just a junk room. And I thought it would be a good idea to try and reproduce the projection room as it would have looked um, in earlier days. The earliest artifact that we have is in fact a Powers number no. 6 projector. That projector, the silent projector of course, <laughs> dates to around 1909. But um, looking at the machine it was not possible as it had been donated to use it in the way in which it was at that time and so it was decided that we would look at an earlier projector, model of projector from Bowers, uh, a number four, and uh, that we would convert the number six to a number four. And this portrayed what a hand crank projector of that era would look like without spool boxes and with just a leather bag or cloth bag to collect the film. Sixteen millimeter is the other gauge that we have quite a large range of. 
um, people remember these projectors from their school days when they used to be have films shown in the school hall and they would recognize these and have happy memories or otherwise of that time the other gauge that was very popular was of course 9.5 millimeter and we've got a wide range of 9.5 millimeter projectors both silent and sound um, people love to see these projectors particularly if they work of which quite a number do We do have a 28mm projector, which is known as the Pathy KOK or COP, and we also have some 28mm film which is quite an interesting piece of film to look at. The Kersner Collection team were a very good group of people. They were enthusiastic about their subject, they knew about their subject, and what's more important, they could tell this to our visitors. There was Colin Cowles, who I must mention, who was responsible for quite a number of our artifacts. He was one who liked to demonstrate, and he would be wandering around the collection, switching on machines, switching them off, showing bits of film, talking to people about the films. There was Colin Walkington, he was our engineer and a very good engineer and he would be able to make parts for some of the projectors. There was Myrig Hailstone, a Welshman with a name like that of course, and very quickly took up projection and was our main projectionist and would be situated up in our mini cinema in the top floor of the cinema showing films for hours on end to our visitors another one of the team was john slater who hails from devon and he would come up every weekend that we opened the collection and he was a mine of knowledge about cinema film and cinemas in general and he would be constantly talking to our visitors uh, about cinemas of the past and of his experiences. The optical sound head, which is British Thompson Houston, as is the art player. And white soundtrack, and that had to be photographed separately onto the or grafted separately onto the film, because until the 90s, the, the uh, track had to be couldn't be coloured. I must of course mention Ron Franklin who had been a projectionist all his life and until recently was still working in a cinema and he had been with the Gaumont with the rank um, organization for many 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 years he was an excellent knowledge person of knowledge he was able to relate cinema experiences. I must also mention Gina Scarver who was providing us with our comforts such as tea and biscuits but she would be very active when we were entertaining young people which we often did to the collection from organisations like the Beaver Scouts and the Scouts Association or whatever. 
There was also John Bingham and Gary Cousins. Both of those would be found showing people around the collection and explaining things that people wish answers to. Brilliant picture, Morris, isn't it? Getting bigger. That's because the film is so old. Sadly, the collection is no longer with us, but all good things come to an end. During its time, and that was over 14 years, 15 years nearly, the collection provided an opportunity for people to see history of the cinema, how it worked, why it worked, and to be able to learn more about what has brought us into the digital era.